Okay, let's talk about solving this system of linear equations by the substitution method. So if you're watching this video, I assume you're studying systems, which means that you're probably in some sort of algebra class. Um, it could be possibly uh, pre-algebra, maybe algebra one, college algebra, intermediate algebra. There's so many different varieties and flavors of algebra. It's just all good stuff. But we're going to get into how to uh, use the substitution method. And we're going to talk about this real basic uh, problem just to kind of um, emphasize the procedure to take with solving systems using the substitution method. And we're also going to uh, talk a little bit about the elimination method. But we're going to get to all that in a second. First, let me go ahead and introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tabit Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. And over many years, I've constructed what I like to believe is one of the most comprehensive online math help programs there is. So if you need to take a full online math class or if you just need help, with the current uh, math class that you're in and you want my best work, um, I solve uh, literally complete full comprehensive lessons and thousands of video-based solutions to problems, okay? That's the number one thing. You have so many problems that you have, you know, it's nice to just have something more than just a basic answer key. You want to see problems solved. So uh, I'm going to leave a link to my math help program in the description of this video. You can check that out. Also, um, I'm a big stickler on notes. Now, the reason why I am is because I've seen over uh, decades of teaching mathematics that the better note taker you are, the better you're going to do in math. Okay, so you've got to really be honest with yourself. Are you taking good notes? Everybody needs great notes to study from. Okay, so if your notes are not where they need to be, you need to, one, work on them, and two, you need to, you know, have something to study from. So I offer... Uh, great comprehensive notes. I'm going to leave the links to those in the description of this video. That would be pre-algebra, um, algebra one, geometry, algebra two, and trigonometry. So if you're anywhere in that range, you can check out my notes if you want to. Okay, so let's get into solving systems by uh, the substitution method. Now, let's go down here real quick. So I'm going to do this problem using the substitution method, but let's just talk real quick about what a system is. So a system, right, so you can have uh, x plus y equals 6, and I don't know, let's say 2x minus 8y equals 10, right? We're not going to do this particular system, but what we're talking about is linear systems, all right? Just a quick review. This is a line, okay, we'll call it line 1, and this is another line, we'll call this line 2, okay? Now, the whole concept behind linear systems, what we're trying to do is we're trying to determine where the two lines intersect, okay? In other words, this line I could plot, let's say it plots this way, I have no idea how it actually plots, so I'm not gonna do it. But let's say I was to graph this line and, and it plots this way, and this line here, uh, when I graphed it, it uh, was this, okay? It was, it was in this particular line. So clearly, the two lines intersect at this point. And that point is some specific x, y point. This is, by definition, the solution to a system, okay? Now, just so you know, all right, to do, to solve systems, you have some choices here, okay? I could actually graph the lines. I could be like, oh, let me just graph these and look where they cross. So that is what we call the graphing method, which is not really a practical method, okay? I mean, it's okay when we're just learning the concept of systems, but then we have two main methods, okay? Uh, the first would be the elimination method, sometimes called linear combination or elimination, um, or elimination linear combination, okay? So that's one method, and the other is the substitution method. And in more advanced topics, there's even other ways we can solve systems. So these are the two main things that you need to know, the elimination uh, combination method and the substitution. You need to know both of them. Sometimes students get fond of one. They're like, oh, I just love the elimination. And then they want to do all their problems using the elimination. Don't do that. You need to learn both methods. You need to be great because depending on the problem, using one method or the other is going to be an easier way to go. All right. So just a quick overview of systems. Now, real fast, before we leave this little graph here, um, there is no guarantee that uh, two lines will uh, cross, okay? So in other words, if I have a line and then I have another line that's parallel to that line, guess what? There's no solution, 
Okay. And then let's say I had a line and then I happen to plot a line and it's actually on top of that first line. Okay. This would be an infinite amount of solutions. So there's other little twist to systems that you need to know. Just making sure that you know this stuff right now. That being said, right, you, it doesn't help to teach you a method if you don't even understand the concept, okay, from the beginning. That's why I always do this. That's my teaching style, and I teach because, you know, you know, when I started teaching, I wasn't as good as I am now. And I teach uh, to, I know this, the questions that students are going to have before they even have them. That just comes from experience, so hopefully that clears up some things about systems that maybe you didn't even know. All right, so let's go ahead and look at this system. We're gonna solve this using the substitution method. Now, let me get rid of these brackets, okay? So we have two equations, okay? This is actually the answer, okay? This is the answer, this is the coordinate, all right? Uh, the point where these two lines would intersect on the xy plane. So x is gonna be four and y is equal to negative two. So if you wanna try this problem, you can go ahead and do that if you like. But let's very, very briefly look at this uh, uh, system and think to ourselves, man, what would be the best way to go? Well, personally, I would, uh, you know, use the uh, elimination method, okay? So you could just add down like this, a, what we call a linear combination. You can combine these down into one equation. And guess what? These guys would go away. I would end up with 3x, a positive 3y, and a negative 3y go away, and I'm left, left with 3x is equal to 12, okay? So 3x is equal to 12. Then I would divide both sides of the equation by 3. x is equal to 4, and voila, right there, x is equal to 4. That's what I have, right? It's part of my solution. And then I can go on and substitute that 4 back into any of these equations here, and I would get my y, okay? So that's just a quick... Um, reminder of what the elimination method is okay so again you want to look at a problem and judge what's what's a better at is this a better situation for elimination or substitution okay now substitution we're going to go ahead and do that now what you want to do is solve you need to solve for one variable okay so uh, you have four choices okay I have this top equation I could solve for the x, okay, or I could solve for y in this top equation, okay, so I have a choice here, x or y, and then I have two choices down here. I could solve for this x or this y. You have four choices. You need to pick one variable and solve for that variable. So I could solve for this x, Okay, or I could solve for this y, or I could solve for this x, or I could solve for this y. It doesn't make a difference in the substitution method, but your first step is to solve for one variable out of one of the equations. Now, um, it's obviously common sense that you want to pick the easiest variable to solve for. So out of these four variables, which one is the easiest to solve for? Hopefully, it said this x in the second equation would be the easiest to solve for. So what do I mean by solve for? means that I want to rewrite this equation, okay, in terms of x. So it would look like this. And this is where I find that uh, most algebra students struggle. They don't know how to rewrite this. In other words, I want you to rewrite this such as x equal. So I don't want x minus 3y. I want to get that negative 3y on the other side. So I have to add 3y to both sides of the equation. So that would look like x is equal to, and we'd like to put the variable part uh, uh, first, 3y plus 10, okay? So one of the things that I found over years and years and years and years of teaching is that students struggle with the substitution method because they'll, they'll struggle with uh, rewriting variables, okay, or solving for a particular um, variable given a two or a variable equation. So you need to go back and recall um, how to do this, right? You've got to practice this in your basic equation solving strategy. So th if this confuses you, this is a very um, common place where students mess up in the substitution method. But if you understand this, then we're good to go. So here we go. We have, we solved for x, okay? x in the second equation. All right. Whoops, let me write that a little bit better. Uh, remember, neatness counts. 
Now, I'm going to give you a tip. Whatever you saw it for, okay, whatever you saw for, trust me, trust me, trust me, put this in parentheses. That will help, okay? That will help you avoid making mistakes. Okay, so what did we do? We, we solved for a, a particular variable, okay, in one of the equations. So in this case, I saw it for x in the second equation. I saw for x in the second equation. That's what I chose to do. All right, so the substitution method says the following. Now we're going to substitute, right? Substitution method means that, okay, we're probably going to be substituting, and we are going to be substituting. So, again, I solve for x in the second equation. Therefore, I must be substitute. When you substitute, you substitute into the other equation. So because I, I solved for x in the second, I need to now uh, do my substitution into the other equation, which is the first and I'm going to be substituting for x, okay? So I solved for x in the second, but now I'm going to substitute for x in the first. And what am I going to substitute x for? This right here, okay? I'm saying that x is equal to 3y plus 10. So I don't have to have an x. I can also put a 3y plus 10 because they're equal to one another, all right? And this is the secret sauce to the substitution method. So let's go ahead and do that now. So I'm going to take this first equation, Okay, I'm going to substitute this x for this stuff right here. And we're going to keep those parentheses. That makes a difference. So 2 times x is going to be 2 times 3y plus 10. Okay, because 3y plus 10 is the same as x. So I'm writing really writing 2x, but I'm choosing to write it as 3 or sorry, 2 times 3y plus 10 plus, I got to write the rest of this, 3y equals 2. Okay. Now, what's the advantage of just doing this? Now I have one equation in just one variable. Okay. I have an equation just with y's. I, so now I could just do basic algebra. So let's go ahead and solve for y. That's going to be 2 times 3y is 6y plus 2 times 10 is 20 plus 3y equals 2. Let me give myself some room here. All right. So what do we got here? So 6y and 3y is 9y. Let's write that right here, actually. That'd be 9y plus 20 equals 2. Now i got to move the 20 to the other side, so I'm going to subtract 20 from both sides of the equation. So I get 9y is equal to negative 18. And then when I divide both sides of the equation by 9 to solve for y, I get y is equal to negative 2. Okay, y is equal to negative 2. Now, up here, remember I said this is the answer, okay? This is x and this is y. So there's my negative 2, okay? So I know now that, that y is equal to negative 2. I just solved for it, all right? Let me just erase that a little bit better. y is equal to negative 2, okay? And that's how we solve for it right there. So now let's get x. Well, how do you get x? You go back to that very, very first equation. And when I teach this stuff, I like to tell students to put a box around this because this is going to be our starting point and our ending point. Right, we start by solving for one equation. We're going to start here, and then we're going to end here. Okay. So y equals negative 2. I need to solve for x. And guess what? I got a beautiful little equation right here such that when I plug in the y, I get the x. It's all set up for me nice and easy. So let's go ahead and do that now. That's going to be x equals 3 times y. I know y now is negative 2, all right? All right, let's plug that in. Plus 10. So x is going to be equal to negative 6 plus 10. x is equal to positive 4. And that's what I told you it was. So 4, okay, 4 negative 2 is the point of intersection for those two lines. Okay, I don't want to make this video uh, too much longer than it already is, but again, when it comes to the substitution method, you know, what really messes students up is they don't they struggle with solving for um, rewriting a, uh, an equation in terms of one variable. That's a very, very common uh, place, okay, errors. So just pay attention to me and you're going to avoid the common pitfalls. So one, make sure you know how to do that. Two, use parentheses because when you plug in and you're not using parentheses, you will kind of mess up your distributive property. Use parentheses, okay? Three, I'm assuming you know how to do basic 
algebra and solve basic equations. If you're struggling with that, then you know, you know, we, you need to, you know, brush up on that. Or you're not going to be able to solve these system problems. Okay. Once you get your answer, okay, from that first step, you're going to come back to where you started to get your second answer. And that is the substitution method. Now, if we would have solved, um, this by elimination, it would have been much easier. But listen, there's a lot of problems that are easier with substitution, and elimination is not the way to go. You need both methods, okay? And obviously, this is something you need to get good at. You absolutely need to know how to solve systems. It's a huge part of algebra and beyond. So if you're in algebra right now and you're like, ah, I just need to get through this chapter, and then hopefully this will just go away. Um, so sorry to inform you that it's not going to go away. It's just going to keep... Um, coming up over and over and over again. So you got to know this stuff. You got to learn this stuff and just, you know, uh, practice. And that is the key, all right? None of this is going to stick unless you um, practice, okay? Practice, see how you're doing, et cetera. But it's nice to be able to practice a bunch of problems and see, you know, video explanations of, of that. And that's what I offer in my math help program. We're going to do a lot of problems, but you know, I, I solve them by video. You can look at that. But that's not the only way you can um, practice, okay? You, hopefully, your teacher is giving you a lot of examples. And on my channel, I offer, I'm sure I've done many of other, uh, you know, I've done hundreds and hundreds of uh, YouTube videos. So I'm, I've done plenty of uh, videos on systems. But the long and the short of it is you got to practice this stuff or it's not going to stick, okay? All right. So with that being said, uh, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.